a short biography, right? So Professor Marco Donald uh, Migliori received the Laura and the PhD degrees in electronic engineer from the University of Naples in Naples, Italy. He is currently an associate professor with the University of Cassino in Cassino, Italy. He, is, he was a visiting professor with the University of California at San Diego in 2007, 2008, and 2017 at Hennes, France in 2014, and in 2016 at the Central Research Center in Finland. Uh, he was a speaker at the summer research lecture series at the University of California, San Diego, right, in 2008. And his main scientific interests currently include the connections between electromagnetism and information theory, analysis, synthesis, and characterization of MIME antennas, ad hoc wireless networks, antenna measurements, and energetic applications of microwaves. Uh, Dr. M uh, Migliori is a member of the Italian Electromagnetic Society, the National Inter-University Consortium for Telecommunication, and of the Elegia Unicas Research Laboratory. He serves as a referee for many scientific journals, and was an associate editor for the IEEE Transactions on Antennas and Propagation. He is currently the head of the Microwave Laboratory of the University of Cassino in South and Lazio, and the director of studies of the ITC courses of the University of Cassino in South and Lazio. So now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Dr. Marco Dono to start his presentation. So thank you again very much for being here with us, and also for kindly being uh, the professor and the presenter to open this uh, conference, this workshop uh, during this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this invitation. And uh, the topic of this presentation is um, probably a, as unusual as the title. Uh, the title is uh, Who Cares About the Horse? And uh, the topic is the, the relationships between information theory and electromagnetic theory. And uh, uh, in the last decades, we have seen an incredible explosion of uh, communication systems. Uh, we have gone from the first generation to the second, third, fourth. Now we are coming to the fifth generation. But we are thinking <coughs> about the new generation, sixth generation, and so on. And uh, uh, each generation is characterized by an increase of the data rate, an increase of the number of information that we can send using wireless systems. And so the natural question is uh, uh, how far we can go? Uh, how much information we can uh, send using the wireless uh, communication systems? Uh, <clears throat> what is the limit of the amount of information that we can send? Uh, and uh, before introducing the, the problem, uh, I would like to recall uh, two uh, trivial points in some way. The first is that uh, any communication systems, any wireless communication systems, are based on the use of uh, the electromagnetic field. And the second one is that the key technologies, the technology of the new communication systems, is the use of space domain besides the time domain. MIMO systems, uh, massive MIMO systems, are strongly based on the use of the space um, besides the time. And this presentation will be focused on the space. How much information can we send using the space domain? And, uh, um, well, uh, let us come back a, a bit. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the last centuries, the most uh, useful uh, communication system was based on horse and horsemen. And uh, um, the horseman uh, brought the um, message in his bag, and the horse uh, brought the horse and the horseman to the receiver. And uh, in this communication system, the role of the horse is uh, clear. Uh, the horseman can bring a lot of messages. Uh, he can put a lot of papers in his bag. But if the bag becomes 
too heavy, the horse doesn't run. So in this communication system, it's clear that the uh, final limitation is the horse. Uh, and uh, today we don't use horse and horsemen, of course. We use uh, uh, modern communication systems. The role of the uh, horseman um, is now uh, done by the uh, communication uh, um, techniques, uh, uh, the sophisticated softwares that are used to uh, send, uh, send communication, send data. Uh, while the role of the horse uh, is now done by the electromagnetic field. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, exactly like in the old communication systems, the final limitation uh, of the modern communication system is related to the horse. The horseman can bring a lot of a lot of bits, a lot of data. But if the horse is not able to bring this data, the communication system fails. So the, uh, the objective of this presentation is to understand the limitation of the horse, of the, com of the electromagnetic field in transmitting information. And uh, in order to understand the amount of information that we can send, uh, we uh, must blend the electromagnetic theory and the information theory. Um, this is not so uh, simple in time domain because uh, um, electromagnetic theory is based on Maxwell equations that are deterministic, while information theory is basically statistically. So uh, we will use a, a, a information theory, uh, a let us say, uh, a, a kind of information theory that was developed by Kolmogorov. Uh, and um, it, um, it works in functional sets. And uh, since uh, also the electromagnetic theory works on functional set, this allows a simple connection between the electromagnetic and the information. And uh, let us introduce our space communication system. We have a, uh, a current distribution here. The current distribution uh, <coughs> radiates a field, and the field is observed on this observation curve omega. Uh, and uh, we suppose that the energy of the current distribution is uh, finite. That means that the norm of the J, J is the current distribution, is finite. And this is how our space communication system works. Let us suppose that we want to, uh, to send the uh, bits. We associate 0, 0 to a current distribution. So we have a field distribution on the observation curve. And uh, by observing this field distribution, we can retrieve the information 0, 0. When we want to transmit another um, bits, another couple of bits, we can associate a different field distribution, a current distribution. We have a different field distribution, and so we can retrieve this zero, one bits, and so on. For each piece of information, we can associate a different uh, current distribution. So information is encoded in special variation of the electromagnetic field instead of temporal variation. And uh, let us consider, oh, sorry, there is something wrong here, whoever. Let us consider now the electromagnetic model. We have the current distribution. <coughs> the current distribution radiates the field, and the field is related to the current distribution through this integral, this should be here, this should be this integral. Uh, and G is the green function. The green function takes into account all the details of the environment around the source. Um, now, oh, it's, this is a problem. OK, but uh, let us introduce a complete orthonormal basis to expand the current distribution on D and the field on E. 
So we use a, uh, a current distribution. This is this one. This is the current distribution. These are the basis function fk. Sorry, it's not clear here. And these are the coefficients of the uh, current distribution. So each current distribution is uh, characterized by a set of coefficients xk. We can repeat the same thing on the field on the observation curve. We expand the field using an orthonormal basis. This is gk is the orthonormal basis. Here we should have this sum, this series from one to infinite and yk are the coefficients of the expansion. So each field configuration is characterized by a set of coefficients. And so this is a geometrical picture of the, <coughs> of the uh, information transmission. We have the bit zero, 00, we associate a current and we expand the current using the base, uh, orthonormal basis. Uh, each coefficient of the orthonormal basis can be seen as a, um, uh, a um, well, um, the, the, the set of coefficients can be seen as a point in a functional space, okay? Each uh, element <coughs> of the coefficient <coughs> can be seen as a, uh, a coordinate of a point in an infinite space. So this current is associated to this point in this infinite space. This current distribution is associated to these other points. This current distribution is associated to this other point. And this set X is the set of all the points that are associated to the currents on my uh, source. And the, <coughs> the radiation operator A, the integral that relates the current to the field, uh, maps, for example, this field, this point, in this other point, in this set Y. Y is the set of all the field configurations that can be radiated by the currents. So the radiation operator is just a mapping from a point of X, the set of the currents, to a point of Y, the set of the fields of <coughs> on the observation curve. When we observe this configuration, we know that we have sent the zero, zero bit. We, uh, when we observe this configuration, we know that we have sent this 0, 1 bit and so on. So this is the <coughs> what happens in our space communication system. Well, <coughs> uh, the radiation operator is an integral, but if we expand the, <coughs> uh, the current and the field in orthonormal basis, we can represent it using an infinite matrix. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the infinite matrix A. Y is the, uh, the point in the output space that in our case is the field on the observation curve. And X is the point in the input space that is the <coughs> current uh, the set of the current distribution. Uh, and these are the coefficients. I'm sorry, these integrals should be here. Okay. <coughs> of course, uh, what we want is to understand what is the current distribution uh, observing the field on the observation curve. And this means that we have to invert this infinite linear system. And uh, um, what we can obtain depends on the properties of this matrix A. And uh, um, in order to invert this matrix, we need to diagonalize the matrix. This is possible and um, we can use uh, the Hilbert-Smith decomposition 
since the radiation operator is a compact operator, uh, and uh, in this case, the coefficient, the first coefficient, y1, is relate of the output is related to the first coefficient, x1, through this number, and this number is called the singular, uh, the singular value of the uh, operator. Uh, this is true for y1, y2, yk. These are the components of the uh, point in the output space, and the set of these components represent a specific field configuration. Instead, x1, x2, xk are the components in the input space, and the set of these, uh, <coughs> these numbers uh, these coefficients represent a specific current configuration of the source. And another important property is that the singular values tend to zero. That means that the limit of sigma k, I don't know if uh, you can see, but the limit of sigma k for k that tends to infinite is equal to zero. Uh, and so, <coughs> This is what happens in our case. Look, in, um, we, have, we have supposed that the current has finite energy. For example, the norm of the current is, is finite. This means that the norm of x is finite. Let us say that it's not smaller, not higher than one. Uh, so the set of all the possible x is a sphere is the set of all, op, all the possible um, points having a norm not larger than one. Of course, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three uh, are different, each to the other, so the output is a point that belongs to an hyper-ellipsoid. And so the radiation operator transforms this hypersphere, this is the set of all possible current distributions on my source, into an hyperellipsoid. And the main uh, half axis of this hyperellipsoid are equal to sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. And let us remember that the singular value tends to zero. That means that the length of this half axis tends to zero. So this is an infinite dimensional hyperellipsoid, but the axis tends to zero. Um, and now, let us consider the presence of noise. Uh, in any communication system, uh, we, uh, we have always noise or uncertainty <coughs> due to the measurement errors. So how to model the noise? In Kolmogorov theory, the noise is modeled as a sphere having a radius epsilon. Epsilon is related to the uncertainty that we have. The idea is that we are not able to distinguish two points that belong to the same epsilon sphere of uncertainty. For example, in this case, we have this current, this current that is mapped into this field configuration. And this current that is mapped into this field configuration. These two points belong to the same sphere of uncertainty. And so we are not able to distinguish them. If this is associated to zero, zero, and this is associated to zero, one, we are not able to reconstruct the information without equivocation. Instead, this point for example, that is relative one zero, is associated to this field configuration, and we are able to distinguish one zero to this other uh, information since they belong to different sphere of sphere of uncertainty, and this is um, uh, extremely important because it means that the number of distinguishable <coughs> Uh, configuration of field uh, is equal to the number of the spheres, epsilon spheres, then we can pack into this y 
set. So it's exactly equal to the number of spheres that we can pack without, of course, um, <coughs> intersection. And uh, this number, the maximum number of sphere that uh, does not intersect, uh, is called the <coughs> covering number, the, sorry, the packing number. And uh, the logarithm of two of this number is called the, the Kolmogorov epsilon capacity. So it means that the maximum amount of information in bits that we can um, send without equivocation using space domain is equal to the epsilon uh, capacity of Kolmogorov. And um, an interesting question is, uh, um, is this number finite or infinite? Um, since we are working in an infinite dimensional space, this is an infinite dimensional space, um, it sounds that we can put um, an infinite number of spheres in this set. Uh, and this means that, in this case, we can send as many information as we want using space domain. But unfortunately, this is not true. And in order to understand this, uh, let us consider uh, first just a, um, uh, a dimension. For example, this, the, the first dimension, U1, this should be U1, sorry. The first dimension. And let us evaluate the <coughs> number of the spheres that we can pack inside this one-dimensional space. This goes from um, minus sigma one to sigma one. It's, it's two sigma one long. Uh, in this case, the spheres are segments. They are two epsilon long. And so we can pack a number of, uh, of bits, a number of segments. And this is the amount of information that we can send using only this dimension. We can add another dimension, sorry another dimension, and uh, in this case, <coughs> the spheres are, of course, uh, <coughs> um, are circles, and we can put some other circles. So in this case, the amount of information increases. But when we add other dimension, let us remember that the, uh, the length of the axis, half axis of these uh, hyper ellipsoids tends to zero. So um, <clears throat> after a, a, a dimension, let us say the kth dimension, the length of this, <clears throat> um, this, um, length, the, the, this axis of the ellipsoid becomes too small to put other spheres. And this means that we have a limit for the number of spheres they, that we, then we can put. And it's, un, un, it's useless to use more than k dimension to send information. The maximum number of dimension is k because after the k dimension, we cannot put more, more balls. And we are not able to increase the amount of information. So again, I'm sorry, this is a, a series from uh, of YK, UK, this is the, electro, the, the representation of the electromagnetic field using the basis, the UK basis. These are input and output, and in this case, I stopped at this number. This number is called the number of degrees of freedom and represents the maximum um, number of dimensions that we can use to, to pack, let us say, the balls. Uh, and it's equal also to the, uh, to the effective rank of the radiation operator. And this is, a, uh, this is a basic limitation in the amount of information that we can send using space dimension. And people that work in MIMO systems uh, can, um, can see that this representation is very close to the representation of the parallel communication space channels in MIMO systems. And indeed, these are parallel communication channels. 
I can send a piece of information, x, y, a piece of information, x2, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> since this information uh, are statistically independent, uh, we can uh, increase the channel capacity in the standard Shannon theory. But what we can see is that the number of the uh, parallel communication channel that we can obtain is not larger than the number of degrees of freedom of the field. This means that an electromagnetic quantity that is the number of degrees of freedom of the field that is basically the effective rank of the radiation operator limits the maximum amount of information that we can send using space dimension. <clears throat> And uh, uh, so uh, the number of degrees of freedom is basically <coughs> the number of basis function that we can use to represent the field on the observation curve. And um, it's an electromagnetic quantity that limits both the standard antenna synthesis and the MIMO antenna synthesis. And what is interesting is that we can use uh, this concept to understand what is the difference between, um, let us say, standard antennas and MIMO and space-time antennas. So, for example, in a standard antenna, we basically synthesize the, the field on the observation curve, that in our case is the far field, uh, and uh, this is always the same. Uh, no space variation. We uh, transmit only information in time. Instead, in uh, space-time communication, we <coughs> let us suppose that we want to transmit 0, 0, 0. In this case, we associate this information to this field configuration. Then, these other... <coughs> Uh, these other bits to these other field configurations, and so on, these other to these other field configuration, and again, zero, zero to this field configuration. And this field configuration belong to different uh, epsilon spheres, so we are able to reconstruct this information observing the field configuration without any equivocation. And the difference is exactly this. When we send transmission, the receiver knows exactly what is the pattern in standard antenna. No uncertainty. In MIMO, in space time uh, systems, instead, the receiver does not know what is the pattern, the field configuration that we can send. There is an uncertainty on the pattern, and uncertainty is associated to information. This is basically how the, 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 the system based on space processing work. Um, well, and um, so the number of degrees of freedom um, has, let us say, two roles. I'm sorry again, uh, this is the series between 1 and NDF of y, uh, yk, that are the coefficients, and uk. uk are the basis that we are used to expand E, and the number of the bases is limited by NDF. And this is a limit that is true both for, for standard and MIMO antennas, for example, it, uh, for, uh, of, so, uh, of course. It's a limit of the, uh, related to the representation of the field. And so the number of degrees of freedom uh, in, has, uh, let us say, two roles, two possible roles. In standard antennas, it's used to approximate the field, in our case, the pattern, the radiation pattern, um, um, as close as, um, as possible to a desired radiation pattern. So let us say it's um, uh, energy driven in some way. Instead, in a uh, uh, space domain, the number of degrees of freedom are used to send statistically independent information. The synthesis of MIMO systems are, let us say, information-driven. Uh, 
And uh, uh, this is an example. Let us suppose that we have to synthesize an antenna in near field. This is the radiation, uh, the radiation uh, uh, source. This is the observation uh, curve. And uh, um, <coughs> there are two possible uh, solution. One is energy driven. We want to maximize the energy on the observation curve. And the solution is this one. Uh, oh, this is the, the um, sorry, this is the field representation on this, uh, <coughs> on this uh, observation domain. And uh, <coughs> the solution is to choose the first the solution associated to the first singular value. And if we apply the Shannon theory, the um, standard capacity is basically this one. This is the bandwidth. We are working now in space-time domain, of, of course. And this solution is called MIMO beam forming. Another solution instead is not to maximize the energy, but to maximize the amount of information. And the solution in this case is uh, <coughs> to send uh, statistically independent information uh, using the number of degrees of freedom of the field. And the solution is this one. The capacity is this one. And if we compare these two capacity, we can note that if we, uh, we, if we have more than one number of degrees of freedom on the observation curve, it's better to use the degrees of freedom to send uh, statistically independent information than to maximize the energy. And this is the solution that uh, have been, uh, has been obtained in uh, MIMO and space-time processing. Um, and what is interesting is that so the number of degrees of freedom has these two roles. One is, uh, let us say, an approximation uh, <coughs> theory role. One is an information theory role. And uh, uh, we, uh, of course, we can decide to spend the number of degrees of freedom, um, all the number of degrees of freedom to synthesize the pattern or to send uh, statistical information, uh, statistically independent information. In one case, we have uh, standard antennas. In the other case, we have MIMO and uh, uh, space-time processing. But we can also choose to spend only part of the number of degrees of freedom to transmit information and another part to synthesize uh, a special kind of pattern. And this is indeed possible uh, I don't have time to show uh, results, but it's possible to mix these two kinds of synthesis and obtaining synthesis of, for example, MIMO antennas with uh, some degree of control on the, uh, on the pattern in some, uh, in, in some uh, angular range or um, some, uh, a degree of control of the range of the excitation uh, exactly like the standard antennas. And uh, um, so, uh, in some way, the number of degrees of freedom is an unbreakable uh, limit for uh, uh, any uh, communication systems that system that is based on space processing. And this, it's important to, um, to analyze what are the limits uh, related to the electromagnetic field. Otherwise, the expectation sh could be, let us say, not so, um, so good, uh, as good as, uh, we, uh, as the performance that we uh, observe in real world. For example, an example is that um, in MIMO systems, uh, at, at the beginning of the research, uh, the idea uh, was that uh, the ca channel capacity uh, increases uh, with the number of antennas, but uh, in real systems, this is not true. We have a limitation, and at the end, this limitation is uh, uh, related exactly to the number of degrees of freedom of the field. If we try to use um, <coughs> too many, uh, um, too many uh, parallel communication channels compared to the number of degrees of freedom, we, uh, we have this, uh, this uh, consequence. 
So it's important in some way to understand uh, what are the limitations of the electromagnetic field, to understand how to, um, to build better uh, communication systems. Uh, and so, uh, of course, at the end, no mathematical trick can bend the laws of physics at the basis of Maxwell equation. And so the, the message is uh, to take a bit of care also uh, to the horse and not only to the horseman. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> in this uh, site, you can find some other information. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so I'd like to thank uh, Professor Marco Donnelly for the uh, very interesting presentation. Now we can start uh, the time for the questions, right? So uh, any, anyone would like to make any question, maybe? Sebastian, maybe? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we have a lot of questions. Okay, let me pass. Hi. Um, just one curiosity. Uh, can you give some uh, numbers for, let's say, uh, a linear aperture of a couple yeah. of lambdas? Uh, okay. What is the number of degrees of yeah, freedom? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the problem of the evaluation of number of degrees of freedom is, uh, is um, heavily studied in electromagnetic theory. Um, and uh, there are many results. Uh, generally, if we have a source having a surface, a given surface, the number of degrees of freedom is uh, um, roughly equal to the area of the surface uh, over lambda over two squares. In case of linear array, for example, the number of degrees of freedom is roughly um, the length uh, divided by lambda over two and so on. There are um, many uh, results uh, that have been obtained mainly by the Professor Bucci, uh, and uh, they are available on literature. So uh, um, we start from a very strong basis, because we start from a theory that has been well developed in uh, uh, electromagnetic theory. Thank you. Anyone else maybe would like to make any question? Yes? Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, in, this, in the same mind, um, when you say that this depends from the area of the aperture, uh, wouldn't that mean that if you make arbitrarily large antennas, uh, that the limit uh, would still be infinite if you had infinite size antennas? Yes. Uh, in case of an infinite dimension of the antenna, we have an infinite number of, number of, number of degrees of freedom. So. Um, it's possible to develop a, a theory in which the, uh, the, the field is uh, uh, analyzed in terms of special bandwidth. Uh, and uh, um, these infinite uh, long antennas are the equivalent of the infinite special bandwidth antennas in some way. So we are building an infinite special bandwidth antenna in this case. Okay, so any other question? I have a, sh a question, I mean, uh, would you have examples, because you, you have shown uh, uh, the Kolmogorov capacity, right? So would you have, again, go in the direction of, of the question of Sebastian and also uh, Benjamin, right? Would you have examples of a new, how can I say, new, new bounds that you compare using this new computation of uh, the capacity, right, in comparison with the traditional channel uh, capacity. So we have examples of bounds that you can achieve, that, or in terms of gains or losses, and so on, that you could maybe provide that you, I mean, just as an example? Uh, well, uh, this theory has been applied uh, to uh, analyze the channel capacity of systems uh, using both uh, channel and let us say this theory, and uh, 
uh, of course, they match. This is not a special information theory. Uh, if we apply this, the Kolmogorov information theory to uh, random uh, spaces, we come back exactly to the, uh, to the uh, Shannon theory. Uh, it's a bit more general because we can use this theory without using uh, statistics. So, but uh, of course, they at the end they match. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. If it is not the case, then I'd like to thank you all also for your audience. I'd like to thank also the presenter for the for the uh, first presentation of, of our workshop, right? And I'd like also to invite you all for a cough break, right? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.